Hey guys, welcome to episode 12 of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. So thanks so much for joining me this week. I love joining you every Wednesday or Thursday, um, coming to you from central Indiana, where I live with my husband and a lot of little kids. Um, I'm a yarn lover, I love to knit and uh, diving into spinning, um, and I love to sew. So thank you for joining me this week, and I hope that you enjoy the podcast if this is your first time. Um, so per the usual, my little kids are kicking my butt. <laughs> Toddlers one, mom zero, but that's okay because... I have yarn and knitting to keep me sane. So I've been doing a lot of that this week. I have been carving out extra time. And if you have joined me in past podcasts, you'll know that I've been working on several test knits, which are finished. I'm so excited about that. So I have a lot more time now to spend on my other free time knitting, I guess. And um, yeah, so I will hopefully be showing you guys those three test knits in September when the patterns are published. They were a lot of fun and I dyed all the yarn that I used in those projects. So they turned out so cute. I can't wait to share those with you. But I do have another finished object to share with you this week. So as I've been talking about, I have been practicing spinning on my drop spindle. I want a spinning wheel so bad. <laughs> I think about it all the time. I talk about it all the time. My family's tired of me talking about it all the time. So I'm very, very excited though because I actually finished a project on my drop spindle. This is a, uh, I guess a skein of yarn. I don't, a project, you could call this a project. This is um, a, I guess it's a hank right now, <laughs> hank of yarn. I spun on my drop spindle using a Nora rainbow roll and um, I showed it several podcasts back. It is actually a big roll of pencil roving, which is just a, a fairly uniform strip of wool roving, and it had different color changes. And what I did is I spun it on my drop spindle, and then I was able to ply it, and I made this beautiful, lofty 100 grams of yarn and it is so beautiful. I love how it turned out. I would say for my first project this turned out pretty great. I mean it's not perfect but I think it's the I'll have to say this I know there were thick and thin spots. Some part of that is because I wasn't able to control the pencil roving. Um, blame it on the pencil roving right? <laughs> not the spinner. <laughs> But since it was already basically pre-drafted, I didn't do any drafting on it because it was fairly thin. So there were thick and thin spots throughout, but um, I was really impressed with how plying evened those out. And so um, there still are some thick and thin spots, but it really um, evened out. So I was really happy how that turned out. I'm really happy how it turned out it is incredibly squishy. It is incredibly lofty. Um, I mean, it is a massive, massive chunk of yarn. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It is, I really love it. I love the colors in it. I think it would be very, very pretty as a hat or, um, I think it would be really pretty in a shawl if you maybe did stripes of this alternating with like a soft gray or 
even any of the colors in here. I mean, there are a lot of colors in here. Purples, light blue. I think soft gray would be very, very pretty though. You could even do, there's some tan Oops, right there. That would be pretty. So yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but um, I do have to say that I don't think I put enough twist in this. It still turned out really pretty and definitely usable, but I had questions about that when I first started spinning. I didn't know how much twist I should put in to yarn. Yeah, I, I have no idea. So I definitely think, so, well, two things. First of all, if you're going to spin a single, a single ply yarn, I'm pretty sure you have to decide that at the get-go. <laughs> You can't just decide halfway through, I think I'll do a single with this. I mean, I suppose you could, depending on how the yarn is turning out, but I could be wrong. But I think, after doing this project, I think that you need to put more twist into a yarn that is going to be plied rather than a single. That's a guess. I guess I'll have to do a single next and find out. <laughs> But with a drop spindle, this was um, quite a bit of yarn. I mean, this is a lot of yarn and I was having to fit it completely on a spindle. It was getting unwieldy and heavy. And so I just didn't spend it as much as I would um, have wanted to maybe. And so I know for next time that I need to put more twist into it. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll do a project this large on the spindle again. I enjoyed it a lot. I really enjoyed it, but I don't really know now, now that I know how long it takes, I just don't know if I have the patience for it. <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest. I love how this turned out, but I just keep thinking, wow, this would have been so much faster on a spinning wheel, so much faster. So this is done. I'm very happy about it. I think it's so pretty. And then of course, um, for knitting projects, I finished all my test knits, which is so exciting. I'm very, very excited about that. And I have been working on my beekeeper cardigan, as I have been for a while, but I have progress. So this sleeve is completely done. Isn't that great? I think that is so pretty. Isn't that pattern fun? I just think the texture is just gorgeous. So this is what it looks like so far. I've got a finished sleeve. That is a full length sleeve. And I know I pointed this out before, but isn't the reverse texture cool? On the inside, I think that you could uh, wear it inside out basically, and it would look really fun. Yeah, I usually gravitate towards like pretty pronounced patterns and colors, but, um, First of all, I think this would look so pretty with like a bright pink. That's what I keep picturing in my mind is this color in bright pink I think would be really pretty. Plus, you know, when fall comes along, you just gotta wear your fall colors, you know? So this is coming along. Hopefully one of my knitting goals for the next week is to finish that up. And so maybe I'll be able to show you a finished object next week on the podcast. That'd be great. So, um, so yeah, that's really all the knitting I have to show you. Oh, I do want to show you one thing that I dyed, um, just for a, uh, just for a personal project. My hair. <laughs> So this is um, just some wool that I purchased. This is actually Coradale because someone had told me that it is has a really long staple length. So it's really great for beginning spinners to spin. And so I bought, I think I bought about a pound of it. And I took a fourth, so this is four ounces, and dyed it with some leftover dye. And this is how it turned out. Just think that is really, really pretty. I put it into a braid, which is not really a braid. It's kind of like a crochet chain. And I just think that that turned out so pretty. 
I don't know how it'll spin up. Um, I think, you know, maybe once I'm a more seasoned spinner, I will know, I'll know how this looks once I spin it up. Um, I am a little concerned that all of these pale colors here will kind of wash out. And, um, and then I'll have dark colors that are kind of pops of dark colors in there, which actually might look really cool. I'm, I'm sure part of it is how I'm going to spin it. So, um, you know, for example, I could just spin taking wool like that. So I have long pieces or, um, just take strips so I have and basically go all the way all the way down and so I'm only having bits of you know short runs of each color I'm not really sure how I'm gonna spin it yet I'll probably decide once I just sit down and do it I don't really plan these things out <laughs> but anyway I thought this was really pretty and the texture is um, soft. It's really soft. It's not a, It's not soft like merino, but um, I think it's nice. It's um, yeah. I, I wouldn't even say that it's like wooly. I don't think I would call it wooly either. It's, it has a really nice texture. So I'm happy about that. And I actually um, purchased some more wool and dyed it up today. So maybe I'll show you next week what that looks like. That's basically all I have to show you that I've been working on this week. I have been dyeing up a lot of yarn for my shop update on Friday, which is August 3rd. It will be at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, last week I showed you a lot of tonals that I, um, that I dyed up. And so this week I wanted to make sure to dye up some really fun colorways for you on some really fun bases. So uh, let me show you some of those. I have a couple of different color, uh, different bases, I guess, that I have been using this week. Um, normally I dye a lot on my Lani sock base, which is kind of like your standard 75-25 superwash merino nylon. Um, this week I decided to uh, use some of my fun bases. I do have some, you know, some st standard sock uh, bases, but I have been dyeing some on DK, um, which some of you have requested. You want some DK in some of these. Um, I've dyed some on my Panda base, which is a, um, it's a merino and bamboo blend. And that's actually what this is. This is Pink Sand Beach. And it is on, I'm showing this on my Panda Base, which is a really wonderful merino and bamboo blend. And I'll tell you guys, the bamboo makes this absolutely one of my favorite bases. It adds a luster and shine to this. It um, The base itself is a little more white than just a merino and it is so soft. It is incredibly soft. Um, so much so that it feels like cashmere and I was um, I was actually comparing the two this week and if it wasn't for the luster in this and the shine um, and the t I guess it has a very very smooth feel when it's wet when I'm dyeing it um, I would think this is cashmere because it is so so soft so yarn dyed up on my panda base is so wonderful for shawls for because it has so much drape it doesn't have the springiness that um, a regular merino or merino nylon would have. So it is not um, the first choice for socks. You can definitely make socks out of this, but this is really, this just really shines in something that's drapey like a shawl. So there's that. 
I just think that's so fun. And so I'll have this and on a pan on the panda base, and then I also have DK in that too. I will also have Palm Springs on several different bases. Sock bases, DK weight, all different bases. So check that out if you like this colorway because I'll have it on several different bases. Whatever you want. <laughs> I'll also have highs, which is a colorway. I think I showed this on my very first podcast and um, kind of told the backstory about it um, or behind it. But this is a really, really beautiful, um, like a bright peach down to like a deep gold black. This would make a really different, fun pair of socks. It's just a, I love all these colors together. So I'll have that. And that's called Highs. I'll also have a new colorway um, called Mahi. And this is, um, I developed this colorway and this formula because I wanted a really good colorway for a sweater or um, something where a more variegated colorway would um, maybe not work as well. So. This is called Mahi, and it is a really beautiful bright green. And it has delicate um, all over blue speckles. So I'm just gonna put it there. This is actually, I'm showing this in my DK weight right now. It is very, very pretty. I would love a sweater out of this. Um, this would also be beautiful in a fade. Um, if you were trying to, if you had some blues in it, this would, um, this would be really pretty in it. And I also dyed that up on my, um, newy, uh, bulky single, which is this. And I think this would make such a fun hat. Um, First of all, this would be so fast if you wanted to knit up a hat and it'd be great for gifts, but I can just see throwing like a simple cable up the front of a hat in this. I think that would be really cool. So that's Mahi. And I have another new colorway and um, this is called Crested Wave. And kind of the same idea with the last colorway I showed. I wanted it to be just like a really great, um, almost a tonal semi-solid, but with some speckles in it. And this would make a really beautiful sweater or, you know, something else you didn't want it super variegated, but um, I'm actually showing this on DK weight right now. I think this would actually make a really pretty pair of fingerless mitts. Um, would make a really pretty gift. So this is called Crested Wave and I will have it in several bases as well. This is Purple Passion Flower. This is definitely a favorite, a fan favorite. It is beautiful, super, super fun. It's gorgeous, definitely one of my favorites. And this is on a DK, so I will have this on several bases. Then I have this one, and this is called Spiced Rum. It's named after um, Spiced Rum, Captain Morgan. This is so beautiful. I think this is really, really fun going into fall with all the different speckles and the golds and the really, um, you know, deep, almost like Merlot looking color. So this is, I'm actually showing this on a DK weight. I'll have this on several bases. And then I'll also have another really great fall color. And this is called Candy Corn. And it, it, it features a um, kind of like a tan a background semi semi solid tan background but then I've added all these 
really bright pops of color orange and some green and some gold actually there's some really bright yellow and these to me kind of um, they represent fall but then it also looks really great with the rest of my yarn so it has the bright colors that I normally use to dye my yarn and um, yeah I just I think this is really pretty so that's all I'm going to show you guys this week um, I will have those colorways I'll have my other tonals in the shop I didn't get to making any new project bags probably because I made so many last week or two weeks ago for the update so um, I still have a lot of project bags in my shop I have I actually right now I, st I have a lot of yarn in the shop it is uh, pretty fully stocked which is um, that's something I kind of like it is I mean for me it's disappointing when you um, go to someone's shop and it's empty I, I mean it's it's kind of out of their control I'm not trying to put anyone down it's kind of out of their control a lot of times someone gets really popular and they just don't have enough hours in the day to keep their store stocked but um, I know for me personally I like to go to someone's shop and browse and look around so I've been trying to really stock the shop with a lot of wonderful yarns and project bags and other things so the shop has a lot in it right now but I will be adding these yarns um, on Friday August 3rd at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I also still have my 2018 advent calendar listings up and um, I don't know if I've really talked about that much on the podcast but I am going to be offering an advent calendar this year and I'm so excited about it because Christmas is hands down my favorite time of year um, besides summer but anyway. <laughs> I love Christmas. I love Advent. Um, I love the countdown. And I really had wanted to purchase an Opal Advent calendar this year. And I heard that they're not going to offer it this year. I still haven't even verified that yet. It's just, I think of it and it's out. You know what I mean? So... Um, so I decided to offer one and I will be doing it beach themed, which that should not come as any surprise. <laughs> so what you'll receive in the advent calendar, it will be, um, 24 minis, 20 grams each, and they will be individually wrapped. Um, so it'll be a surprise every day you can open. I will also be offering a limited edition project bag in the set and you guys I just got the fabric actually for the project bags and it is I won't be able to replicate it because the fabric is um it's vintage and it's so fun it is really really great so I can't wait to um to send them to you but um yeah, I just wanted it to be a really fun treat for you every day and um, everything will be packaged beautifully. Each, um, like I said, each mini skein will be wrapped for every day. Um, it'll actually be boxed for each day and um, all of the colorways will be limited so I won't be dyeing them again. They'll be exclusive to the calendar. So you'll also have the option of adding a full 100 gram skein to the calendar if you'd like to do that. And um, you can choose your base with that. And I won't be dyeing that colorway again either. So um, I was going to offer them until August 15th. I think I'm going to extend it another month until September 15th. So on September 15th, I will take down that listing and... Um, those orders will be closed for the advent calendar for the for 2018. So if you are thinking about getting it, um, please check it out. I think that it will be so much fun and you won't be disappointed that it's going to be a really, really beautiful gift for yourself or for a knitting friend. 
and um, yeah, I'm excited to get those started, but honestly, I am not in the Christmas mood right now. It is still warm out, and i that's why I'm extending the listing, because I don't want to dye Christmas colorways right now. <laughs> so just being honest about it, but, um, but yeah, so that's in the shop. I, um, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe and just so we can spread, spread the uh, podcast to other people who are like-minded and love yarn and love knitting as much as we do. Um, and thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to share it with me. I always really appreciate that. I know how busy you guys are and, um, yeah, I just, I love doing this podcast and sharing time with you and sharing what I'm making with you. So thanks so much for joining me. And until next time, I hope you have an awesome time with your knitting. Bye guys.